today. We'll open up the floor. Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. All right, I get you this out of the way. I mean, had the conversations about players off the end of this game or not yet. Like, when do you need to know that decision so you can start to prepare for a game knowing who you're going to have on the field? Yeah, we have a team meeting tonight. Uh, we're going to go through the schedule. And, um, you know, I think our guys, um, you know, are excited to play in the game. Um, they will be. And, you know, we'll talk through all that um, and, you know, continue to meet with guys along the way. We already had meetings last week, um, all really positive. You know, I think guys know that, um, you know, um, that they want to have something to show for the season, but also have an oppor opportunity to continue to, to put, um, you know, good games out there. And um, so, you know, those, those conversations will continue to be had today and tomorrow. Uh, Tony Gerdman, Buckeye Huddle. Ryan, this is obviously finishing up one season. How much do you view it as the start of next season? Um, yeah, a little bit of both. I think we, we had the situation a couple of years ago in the Rose Bowl, and, and it did build some momentum into the, into, um, uh, into the next year. Um, you know, we always want to be playing uh, for a championship this time of year, but um, you know, we're going to finish things and do things the right way. And and like you said, you know, um, bowl practice is an opportunity for um, you know some of the younger guys to get out there and almost like a spring practice to continue to develop some of those guys. And um, but um, you know, we'll we'll finish this thing the right way. And I'm I'm fine with uh, with, with two questions, folks. Next door, uh, Pat Murphy, twenty four seven sports. Ryan, just initial reactions, obviously wanting to get in the CFP, but facing Missouri, uh, you know, I know you haven't had time to really look into the matchup yet, but what's kind of your initial take from the announcement? Um, first off, uh, Coach Drinkwitz is, is a very good coach, um, somebody that um, I've had communication with over the years. I think he does a really good job. I think they've had a really good season. I've actually followed them some this year because uh, I know him and have a lot of respect for him. So. Um, it should be a good matchup. They're a good team. Um, he's done a really good job putting that roster together. And um, and the Cotton Bowl is a very good bowl. We were there in 17, and they do a great job. Um, you know, the hospitality is, is excellent there. I think our guys will enjoy the week down in Dallas. Um, so, um, you know, we know we have a good opponent and a great a great uh, venue. What is the connection with you and, and Coach uh, No, just, just two coaches who uh, got to know each other from – from being coaches and, and, you know, being young coaches and um, just over the years have just kind of got to know each other a little bit and encourage each other from afar. So uh, I think there's mutual respect there. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Right, last year, obviously, you were waiting to see if you could still potentially get into the college football playoff, even with the loss to Michigan. As you mentioned, this is a little similar to 2021, but you had a young team, then so you had maybe a little bit more optimism about how you could use that Rose Bowl. What has been the last week in this building, and how do you approach a game when there's a good chance that, regardless of who plays or doesn't, there might be a significant reset in what the roster looks like going forward? Well, um, you know, I think a lot of our guys, um, you know, were certainly disappointed last week. And, um, you know, we did have a practice last week. We got together, we had a team meeting. Um, and, you know, we knew that there was going to be a new target this weekend. We weren't sure what it was going to be. And, um, there's a lot of prideful guys uh, on our team. And so, you know, they're going to, um, you know, use this opportunity to either finish things out the right way or um, build momentum for next year. Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, Jim uh, was connected with uh, the Duke head coach and John Wiseman. I know you probably want to comment on the searches, but just what's your expectation with, with him and, and just being in his current role going forward? Obviously. Yeah, no, he. Um, you know, communicated with me that, um, you know, they had reached out. And um, so I know he was, you know, still in the mix there and, and uh, having communications and, um, you know, we'll kind of deal with it. But that's that's part of uh, this time of year with, um, you know, with, uh, with you know, job searches. And I'm sure our guys are going to continually be sought after. We have a really good staff. And um, so, um, you know, Jim's a great coach and, you know, he'll continue to have opportunities. But, uh, I know he's very happy here at Ohio State as well. Lines of communication are open. How do you do? You, do you sell his current job? Do you make a hard pitch? Like how do you? How do you? I guess communicate with you about that. Uh, yeah, just those are kind of private conversations. But um, yeah, we just we talk through things, and you know, I always want to make sure that um, you know guys are being loyal to the program, but at the same time also have opportunities for their families. So um, you know, it's not something 
as the head coach you love to deal with, but at the same time, it's it's part of the job. Austin Moore, podcast. Ryan, do you anticipate making any changes on your own to the staff? And what would the timeline be for that? Yeah, I mean, every year we're going to look at that, and whether it's guys having opportunities to go other places or, um, you know, changing things up, we always got to look at that. Um, you know, but I don't have any updates right now or anything like that going on. Um, but that's something we always do. We evaluate every year. Would there be any urgency to be able to make those moves now? You're not in the playoff, and they could a coach maybe could go on the road. I mean, this seems like it's different than maybe other years to weigh that out and what you need to do now. Yeah, yeah, um, it is. We're in a different time right now, so um, yeah, we'll take that into consideration. But um, but but nothing to um, you know update right now. at trying to get some of your less experienced players more reps in this game or do you just look at it as putting out the best possible lineup to win yeah we want to win the game um certainly the reps in practice leading up to the game um you know will be spread around pretty good but when it comes to play in the game you know we, we we're going to win the game and that's the number one thing and um again cotton bowl is, is a great bowl and we have a really good opponent so um you know we're going to put the best guys out there to win the game quarterback position do you go into this bowl game with Kyle's our guy or do you give Devin and Lincoln a chance to you know push him in bowl practices yeah um you know all, all things that you know we'll, we'll look at um and, and it's not just in that position it's all positions you know trying to figure out um you know it, it'll be good too just to get out there and, and have these guys practicing and um working because you know there's a couple different phases to the the bowl practice you kind of have your fundamental period then you have your game planning and then you have your practicing at the bowl site and you know it's you know there'll be several practices to kind of get evaluations we'll be competitive early on and going against each other and um we'll keep looking at it and ultimately it's going to be you know who gives you the best chance to win a game um but uh, but like you said you know some of the young guys you know at certain positions will have an opportunity based on how they practice in, in the uh, the bowl practices Ryan, there was a 14-0 a team conference champion left out, and I think there's a lot of people around the country that are a little worked up about that. As a head coach who prioritizes win at all costs, to know that that ultimately wasn't enough to get a team in the playoff, how does that sit with you? You know, I, I just you know coming off of our game that um, you know we didn't we didn't finish it out the right way then. You know, that, that's what I've been focused on. You know, I haven't really got too much involved with it. Um, I've always felt like, you know, conference champ um, you know, deserves to be in the in the, the final four. Uh, but I guess this is the last year of that. Um, but, you know, I'm probably not going to get into all that right now. Just, you know, got, got my team to worry about. And as you consider um, future non-conference games, do you think that it is still an incentive to play major teams like, for example, this year Notre Dame or the, the games you have on the schedule against Alabama and Texas and Georgia. Do you think there is still incentive to schedule those kinds of games given the changes in college football? Yeah, I think now that you have a 12-team playoff, for sure it does. I think um, that's probably the biggest change, um, you know, coming forward is that, you know, th those games are going to matter. But at the same time, um, you know, you can build up your team and you can learn from your team by challenging your team with non-conference opponents like that, but also knowing that uh, you'll have an opportunity to possibly make the 12 teams as opposed to just the final four. As you can see, it got really tight this year. So um, no, I think it's, it's going to be a different, um, whole different you know, end of the season next year. But um, I, I think it's great to challenge your team, find out where you're at and grow as the, as the season goes on. Um, you know, we did that this year. by. by by scheduling Notre Dame, which I thought was great, you know, the last two years, and I think it, you know we learned a lot about our team early in the season. Um, but but yeah, it'll be much different next year, and I think it's a good thing. Tom Barry, WBMS. Coach, you've had a week to reflect. As you look at the tape, you said you wanted to look at it before you. What jumped out the most in, in that game? Well, that um, not that it's anything surprising. We know this. We talked about it last year that it can come down to a couple plays and um, down to the last possession or two. And, um, you know, extremely frustrating for everybody uh, to not finish it the way that, um, you know, we, we wanted to. Um, and, you know, you just 
you know, a couple things here and there, and and, and you're on the you know, the losing side of the game. And I think that's the biggest thing. And there's certainly things that you know we look back on over and over again. And you know, um, if it goes another way, you know, we, we get it done at the end of the game. We get off the field, or we finish off a couple. You know, we had the, the three and out, and then we didn't finish the last drive. I mean, it came down to the last possession, and um, you know, to not get it done, it, it certainly uh, leaves a mark. And you know, it's not something you just get over because. As we know, that's the number one goal year in and year out. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that jumps off the film. To come that close, do you welcome this? If, if this was next year, you guys would be in the playoffs. Do you, do you, do you, are you a guy that's welcoming the extension? I mean, it, it is what it is. That's, it's not for me to decide. It's already been decided. So um, it's not going to change the game at the end of the season. That's still the number one thing we got to get done. Um, and that'll be our focus again this year. Kellyanne Sitz, WSYX. Coach, how have we seen uh, Kyle McCord handle that loss and now move forward on to the next one? Yeah, um, it, it's not something that you just move on from. Uh, we know that. Uh, you know, there's just a lot that comes with it. And But it's it's not just one or two guys. It's it's everybody. You know, we all take ownership. Adam Kane, WBNS. We talked a lot about scars in your time here. Obviously, a big one. How do you heal from those scars? And is today one of those starting points finally having another opponent to focus on? Well, um, you know, no one's going to feel sorry for us. So you got to push forward. That's life. And um, and so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. There's always a lot of life lessons. And, um, you know, th this is another great one for our guys to learn, you know, um, about how, how, you handle, how, how you handle yourself during adversity. Um, you know, you learn a lot about the guys that are around you and, you know, as a dad, as a husband, as a brother, as a teammate, you know, you have to handle yourself the right way and move forward. Um, not that it's easy. We're not just going to move on. Like it's, you know, just another game. It's not, but, um, you know, the world's not stopping for us. So we've got to keep moving and that's what we're going to do. It's a full game. You're trying to balance recruiting and now the world with the transfer portal as well. How does that work for you throughout the next month, looking at what's out there already in the country? Yeah, it's a, it's a very unique time in college football. You think about December right now, just of all those things that are coming and going and, and um, the decisions that, that you know, um, you know these, these players have to make, the decisions coaches have to make, uh, the decisions that are made on who's making the playoff. I mean, there's just so much going on. And then you have, like you said, the portal. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot, a lot going on. There's high school recruiting. Um, and so, you know, rosters, you know, move a lot year in and year out, much more than they ever have before. And so um, we're certainly busy working on that. Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Yeah, right with the transfer portal uh, opening this, this week, uh, you guys seem to be a little bit more aggressive in that area last year. Is that something that you guys expect to continue? And, and did you like the way that you guys attacked the portal a little bit differently last year? Yeah, I, it's, it's inevitable. Um, I think early on it was, you know, you use it um, when you need to, but the way things are now, um, I just think, you know, year in and year out, the majority of teams are going to see turnover. Um, you know, we'll have guys enter the portal. Uh, there'll be a lot of guys in the portal starting tomorrow. And, you know, so you have to construct your roster on a yearly basis, and, and that's what we're going to do. Um, and so it's no longer, you know, one of those things, are you going to use the portal or not? It, it, that's part of um, college football. But we are going to make sure that uh, we're doing a great job of identifying the right people that fit the program because there's a lot of pride in that locker room. You talked about uh, guys that are going to enter the portal. You've said a couple times that everything that you put into a guy, you get back. Yeah. Has it just become a little more, I don't know, like, are you a little more numb to when guys leave now than you were three or four years ago? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, I would say so. Um, I would say three or four years ago, you know, someone enters the portal, you're like, what's going on? You know, now um, I think maybe somebody said there was 400 some odd in the portal, I guess, on day one. Is that what it was? Or And this year it'll be even more, um, you know, and so these guys have an opportunity to go out and see what their options are on a yearly basis. And um, so I mean, that's what it is. And, and so we'll adapt with it. But um, but yeah, it's, it's much different even than it was a year or two ago, I would say. How much rosters change 
as a coaching staff, even as for the recruiting department, how much, how often do you guys have to talk about roster construction plans, knowing how fluid things are? Now? Yeah, all the time. And um, you know, you, you have different. It's, it's cyclical. You have this this run, then you have, you know, the post spring practice kind of cycle there um, into the summer, and that's it's usually how it goes. And then you have obviously the the recruiting of the high school players. So there, there's a you know a couple different you know spots in the calendar where you're really working on that. You have National Signing Day, um, so yeah, it's something we were working on a, on a daily basis. What point? I mean, maybe there's not like one point in the season, but after the season, do you think okay, these are the guys who are leaving. These are the guys. This is this is where we have to be heavy. Um, yeah, I, I, part of it is numbers. Other part is like you said, you know, where we feel like we are depth wise. Um, you know, and, and, and there's certain guys who, you know, they get to a certain point in their career where, you know, maybe they don't see an opportunity to get on the field because of what's in front of them or whatever reason those are. And, and so, you know, their best option, maybe see what's out there for them to go get on the field and totally get it. Our guys are competitive. And so some of them will have that opportunity. Um, and so you just have to be, you know, as clear as you can on the front end of it to make sure you're identifying, um, you know, when, when you come to Ohio State, here's what you can expect so that when they get here, there's no miscommunication or confusion. Um, I think we've done a great job of that. But there's, you know, there's going to be guys who decide that maybe there's an other better option for them out there. And, um, and so maybe a fresh start is good. But at the same time, um, you know, we'll look out there to see what's in the portal and, um, you know, who may fit what we need. Do you feel like ultimately you got the level of quarterback play that you need for this team to achieve its goals this year? Well, when you when you come up short, um, you know the bottom line is you got to look at everything because you know you, you didn't get it done, you know, and that's that's the thing that um, you know is just sobering here at, at eleven and one. You come up short in the last possession; it's just not good enough. So you got to look at everything, and and we will look at everything. Into that position, I know you said to Dan that. Go through bowl practices, guys like Lincoln Devin might get some opportunities there. As you stand here today, assuming Kyle does not decide to go to the NFL or elsewhere, is he definitely your starting quarterback for next season, or how do you, I guess, evaluate that at the moment? Um, I just I think that that's that's kind of a long way away right now. Um, you know, we're gonna get back to work here. Um, you know, we'll probably have our, we had a practice last week. We'll have a practice coming up this weekend, and the guys will get out there and compete and and grind and. Um, and we'll take it from there. Uh, you know, I can't sit here and tell you I know for sure about any of those things right now, but um, everyone's going to have an opportunity to compete and, you know, get after it during bowl practice. And, and then when it's time to go play in the game, we'll figure out, you know, who, who should get the reps and, and go from there. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a great answer for that just yet. Andy Backstrom, Letterman Row. Uh, you mentioned 2021 being a similar situation with the Rose Bowl. What did you like about your approach to that off or that postseason, and what did you maybe not like about it, and how would you approach this time? Around? Say that one more time. How do you how do you look at the 2021 postseason approaching the Rose Bowl? So much of a similar situation. What did you like about that approach, and what would you maybe do differently? Oh, okay, yeah, in the 21 year. Um, no, I thought you know the focus was on competing and getting better every day in practice. It wasn't as much about the game planning, although as we got closer, you know, we really dove into that. It was more about getting the, you know, getting guys reps and getting guys up to speed and really focusing on um, fundamentals. Um, and then, you know, I want to make sure that you know it's it's um, you know it's been a rough week here, and I want to make sure that when we go in the bowl, you know, these guys are um, you know they are going to at least enjoy the fact that you know they're going to be in Dallas. It's Christmas and those type of things. So, you know, I want to do everything we can. The Cotton Bowl does a great job to make sure that you know they're enjoying the experience too. I think we did a good job of that in the Rose Bowl. Um, and so we'll do that again here at the Cotton Bowl. But we also know we're there to, f for one reason, that's to win a game. So uh, I think it's that balance that you know, we found a good, um, did a nice job of in that game. And, um, um, but, I, but I think, yeah, year in and year out, you learn more and more about how you want to prepare in the bowl. It's, you, know, you also you know, want to make sure you're not overdoing it. Um, and that balance is critical. I think we found a decent balance the last couple of years in that area. Last year at this time, came out of the, the game and we're talking about going into the, the playoff, wanting to play loose and aggressive and kind of seemed to be at the time kind of a, a, 
a doctrine you're putting out there for how you want to play. As you look back at the last game, do you feel like the team met that standard? Yeah, I, you know, going in, I, I felt like we did. I felt like, um, you know, we didn't overdo it. Um, certainly, everyone knows that it comes down to one game every year, and we, we live it 365 days in this building. Um, so I think sometimes you can you can overdo it. Um, I don't think we did that. Um, and so yeah, you look at everything you do, and certainly you know you look back on everything you do and try to figure out you know where where it didn't work. So we'll do it again this year and um, keep swinging at it. I just want to clarify something else you said to Bill about the quarterback situation. So you're, are you open right now to some sort of a timeshare in the Cotton Bowl as it relates to quarterback right now? Or do you, do you anticipate it just being Kyle's job like it would be if it was any other game? Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to really get into all that right now. Um, and I don't think I'm there yet. But um, yeah, we'll just kind of see how practice goes. Steve Hellwagon, 24 7 Sports. Yeah, Coach, I'm curious. Mental health is one of your, your big initiatives, obviously. and. Uh, I don't know whether any other way to put this, but Kyle was one of the most vilified people around after that game by a lot of people. Talk radio, message board, social media, et cetera. Have you guys had internal discussions with him? He seems like a pretty solid, strong kid, but internally you never know how somebody's going to deal with that, and people lose perspective. Just, yeah. What have you done maybe to counsel him and help him through that? Yeah, well, you know, you try to build up the best you can early on, and. <laughs> Um, you know, build up that armor ahead of time, and then, and then obviously follow back up with it to see how things are going, uh, which all happened. Um, but yeah, not not sitting here saying it's easy. It's not. Um, there's a lot cut that comes with it, and um, it just because you know you identify that early on doesn't make it easy. So uh, we got a lot of people who care about him around here. Um, transfer portal. Social media has already released four or five different guys off your team. Evan Pryor, I guess, just within the last hour posted he's leaving. Um, just your thoughts about the guys who are already kind of put in there and without identifying one or two of them, are there some guys who have put in that you're going to work really hard to make sure that that maybe they consider staying? I don't know. What, what's your thought about that? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, certainly there's going to be – Conversations with, with well, a bunch of the guys. That's just you know kind of the way it is right now um, in college football. Um, but yeah, you know we're gonna um, try to do everything we can to have the best roster year in and year out. Um, but but knowing that um, you know for some guys you know there may be better options out there for them. Um, and so you know part of it is you know that that that's the case for some players. Um, other situations, you know, you're trying to. Um, I guess, quote unquote, recruit your own roster. And that, that's part of it to make sure they understand what their vision is and what our vision is for them in the next uh, calendar year. So, um, you know, all part of the process right now. Bill, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of struck by you, the fact you're pretty non committal about the quarterback position right now. Um, Kyle obviously had a very high bar to, to get to because the three predecessors, what the Heisman Trophy finalists. Were you generally happy with how he played this year? Um, do you feel like he's the guy who could take you to a championship? Um, you know, I think there was a lot of really good things this year. I think, um, you know, started off at the beginning of the year and, you know, um, you could see some of the good things that were going on. And I think as time went on, Kyle got better as the season went on. Um, you know, he had a little bit of those ankle injuries that he worked through. He showed toughness there. Certainly the Notre Dame game, he played really well down the stretch. Um, so I think there was growth there for sure. And um, you know, I think he's a good quarterback. I do. So, um, you know, you just, after every year, you kind of evaluate everything and, and um, you know, try to figure out what to, what to do next. But, um, but I think there was a lot of progress made this year. And in terms of, I mean, you're the coach. You get to take even more heat. Um, losing the mission three times in a row, obviously you got to get. How much attention have you paid to that? How, how have you personally coped with with this? Well, um, it's not easy, obviously. We know what the expectation is. And, um, and so when, when you don't get it done, it, it hurts. And we all know what it means to so many people. But nobody's hurt more than the people in this building. And, and you know, ultimately, it comes back on me. So I understand that and own it. Um, and um, so we're just going to work like hell to get the thing fixed. Uh, Doug Lane Maurice, Kings of Columbus. When you were asked about like a year from now, in this exact situation, you'll be in the playoff, in the 12-team playoff. And your answer was sort of like, you still 
need to beat Michigan, right? How, last year you lose to Michigan, but your dreams, your, your big picture dreams are still alive. This right. year they're not alive. Going forward, they probably will be alive. Like, how, how does the Michigan game fit into what the future of Ohio State football is in a 12-team playoff? Well, I was just struck by the idea that you were asked about the 12-team playoff and you kind of said we need to beat Michigan. Yeah, that's it. Um... I just I just believe in that, and, and you know um, we haven't got it done in the last couple last few years, so um, you know it hurts. But ultimately, that's it. Like when you get up in the morning, if you're not thinking about winning that game, then you probably don't deserve to be in the program. And so we have to continue to work on that and, and you know get it done. Um, and then you know once we accomplish that, then we'll go on from there. Uh, you talked about you know when you have this situation, you evaluate everything, right? How do you think you coached in the Michigan game? Um, you know, probably uh, different than I did the year before. Um, I think, you know, if you talk to the guys, you know, I think we had a really good plan leading up to the game. I think the week was a really was really um, good vibe around the team. Um, you know, you look back on a couple of decisions you make, and you say, well, you know, for instance, you know, at the end of the first half, you know, if we make the field goal, you know, you probably feel better about that decision. Um, you know, fourth and two. 30 seconds to go, maybe if, you know, we get a couple more first downs, a shorter field goal, or maybe even have a chance to, you know, uh, score a touchdown there. But, but I felt like at the time it was a, it was a good decision. And if, I think if we make the field goal, it's a better decision. But when you don't, you come up short, certainly, you know, you second guess all those things. So, um, you know, uh, I think our guys were prepared and uh, I think we had a good vibe going in that week. I think our guys were locked in. They knew how important the game was. Certainly just, you know, you live it all year round. Um, but when you don't get it done, you got to do a better job. So I think that's probably a long way of saying ultimately we didn't get it done. And, and just to follow up on that, the fourth and two, you 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 want to be aggressive. Is that a fair yeah. generalization of how you want to coach and you want your team to play? I think knowing that, I think a lot of us were struck by that you didn't go for it on fourth and two. <laughs> you just brought it up. Yeah. Do you wish you would have gone for it? Do you think you should have? Well, since we missed the field goal, yeah. You guys don't, like, it's a 52-yard field goal. You don't make a ton of 50-yarders. I felt like we here. had the wind, and he was kicking pretty good, and you know uh, he had plenty of leg. Um, but yeah, we missed it. So ultimately, you know, we probably need to, you know, get a couple more first downs and add to the field goal there. Yeah. And I just, I, I don't need to belabor the point, but I think it's so sort of like important for the history of this game. That again, even like Nathan mentioned, of like you've talked about, like you want to let it rip a little bit, right? It just felt like that was maybe like a let it rip. I guess, but with 30 seconds go. left, I felt like you know it wasn't like we had a bunch of time to go score a touchdown there. In in my mind, I felt like you know uh, fourth and two, you know maybe you add to the field goal. Um, maybe maybe there's enough time to throw in the end zone, you know. But at that time, coming out of the first half, you know, I, I just felt like all right, if we can get three points here. That'd be a heck of a thing, fourth and two, not fourth and one. But yeah, you're right. It didn't work. So, you know, ultimately, you know, um, you, you know, you get second guessed on all those things. And um, yeah. And finally, uh, Tim May, Tim May show. Yeah, you, you almost sound like some of the fans afterwards. If you'd known this was going to happen, you would have done this, right? <laughs> right. I mean, that that's inevitable, right? And yeah. I mean, if if you, it's a great call when it works. Yeah. You know, and, and when you don't, but that's that's part of it, and and that's what you got to own as a coach. Uh, how long does that stick with you, though, Ryan? Have you re, have you spent all week uh, waking up early, going to bed late? I mean, what 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 has that been like for you? You know, you know the vitriol from the fans, et cetera. Uh, but what's it been like for you? Yeah, that that's not so much what keeps me up. It's just the players and the opportunity. Yeah, that that's why you know you don't get any sleep. It isn't about all the other stuff that comes with the job and. And, you know, uh, what, what matters is the players. What matters is, you know, uh, what that game means to so many people. And, and so, yeah, it certainly does. It, it hurts. And um, you asked how long is it going to stay? It'll stay forever. That's just that's part of competing. And uh, two, two other quickies. Uh, going to 12 next year, are you, a, are you a fan or not a fan of keeping uh, league championship games? Because it would seem like if you've got two teams in the – top two and four, you know, top four or whatever, why would you put either one of them in jeopardy of, you know what I mean, losing it? What, yeah. what, what are your thoughts about that, about a league championship game and what it adds and detracts from this coming mix? 
yeah, I think that there's there's a lot of great conversation about that. Um, some conversation that we had on our league meetings just surrounding that. Um, I know that the conference championship game means a lot to the league, and um, so. Uh, but but when it comes down to it, I, I think. Um, you know, you have to consider what what does that mean when you're one of the top two teams in the the conference, and then you're um, playing each other for that moment. So, um, you know, but um, you know, I think being a conference champ should really matter, though, in in being ranked in the top four moving forward. Yeah. But but that's a real high intensity game. If it's yeah, it's it's adding another game that's to right. what's coming, right? I yeah. mean, from that standpoint. Yeah. How did your team come out of that game? This past weekend, uh, physically, yeah, we're all, you know, yeah. yeah, we were okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, and one last thing: Are you guys in the market for a quarterback in the transfer portal? This coming transfer portal? Um, no, I mean, right now we're not we're not actively out there, you know, um, you know, searching for anything other than we'll see, you know, kind of what the next month brings, and um, you know, in, in in all positions, you know, so. Not going to sit here and get into you know specifics on each of those positions. You know we're gonna we like the guys that we have at a bunch of positions. You know but we're going to make sure that whether it's numbers or depth that we have the right guys in the right spots. Sort of like we did last year. But I just think there'll be there'll be more movement this year probably than there has been in the past. Just like seems like every year that's happening more and more. So we'll we'll, we'll adapt accordingly. Thank you, coach. Thank you very All much. Right, guys.